Welcome to the VRO Variety Radio Online. This is Video Recap. I'm your host, Brandon Conyes. And today, I'm going to be recapping WWE WrestleMania 28. Yes, that is right, live from Miami. And also today, I have a very, very special guest host. And he is my brother, the great legendary gamer, Bizarro13. Are you serious right now? <laughs> I am totally serious right now. Okay. <laughs> well, welcome to the VRO's video recap, man. It's your first one. Thanks for having me. No this problem. Is, um, this is my first time. It's yeah. your first time. <laughs> We're popping this cherry, folks. <laughs> Woo! All right. Well, as some of you may already know, with a couple of my other, you know, video recaps, especially with Psych and The Miz being on there, I am a huge WWE fan, wrestling fan. Period, or as Biz, Biz over here likes to say, is wrestling. 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 So we wanted to do a special recap for WrestleMania, and I'm gonna try to do one of these every Monday for Raw because I'm not really into SmackDown, and that's because I don't really like Randy Orton. So I'm sorry, all you Orton fans, but I'm not huge on him. So anyway, getting into the event now. The first thing I want to talk about in the event, I thought. It was pretty good WrestleMania, you know. Last year, you and I went to WrestleMania. We had a blast. There was a few good things. There were a few bad things at the WrestleMania we went to. But this one, it had, you know, it had a few better points than last year. Would you say that's true or not? Yeah. Uh, my favorite is uh, definitely Brodus Clay. Yeah, Brodus Clay definitely. That's the highlight of the show. Yeah, that, that's definitely the highlight of the show. That was the greatest segment I've ever seen in WWE history. Yes. But um, we'll get into that in a little bit, and you'll know exactly why. And if you saw the event, you already know what we're talking about, but it was pretty epic. But one of the things I want to talk about first are the supposed guests that were going to show up on at WrestleMania 28, and they didn't show up, man. They were talking about Brock Lesnar and Dave Bautista. I mean, what do you think about that? They were rumored to be backstage, and we got nothing. Again, just like last year, Karma was backstage. There was just so many backstage things that even Lord, what's his name, Tenshi? Is that? Lord Tensai. Tensai. Even he, I was thinking he was going to show up for Team Laurinaitis, and he didn't show up. Mm -hmm. That's just crazy. <laughs> I mean, I was expecting more of some, you know, guest appearances what about you are you a little disappointed in that yeah i feel cheated and lied to you feel cheated and lied to very much so or just a little bit just a little bit well they didn't really lie they just said oh these people are here you know wwe never said that the people were there it was just mm -hmm. more of the dirt sheets more than anything yeah all right well are you ready to recap this thing or what sure all right man well of course there were matches in the beginning of WrestleMania that didn't air, but what we're going to do is we're going to announce, or recap, should I say, the matches that actually were on the pay-per-view. And you can go to other websites and see what those matches were, and it was like a three-way dance between the Usos, uh, Justin Gabriel, and Tyson Kidd, and um, Epico, and Primo. And Epico and Primo won, so there you go, there's your recap of that match. Pretty sad that the tag team division is so low in this, and I really wish WWE would work on that. What about you? Yeah, um, it is very sad. I mean, it's like those belts don't even mean anything. And they're really cool-looking belts, They man. are cool-looking belts. That's just sad. So sad. All right, well, let's get into the first match, which I was totally opposed of having as the first match of the night. It really did bum me out, man. It was the World Heavyweight title match uh Sheamus versus uh Daniel Bryan that was like where you I was I was upset that you know world world not WWE world heavyweight title match was the first one the better belt yeah the better belt not the stupid looking spinner one I mean yeah. come on how unimportant are you making these two guys feel <laughs> I mean, and well, it was obviously the greatest match of the night. Yeah, and the, and the reason for that was um, Daniel Bryan, of course. He is a great wrestler, and I, I'm I'm a big Sheamus fan as well. And I was really surprised by this match because it was so epic that it lasted what 18 seconds. Yes. 
18 seconds, folks. 18 seconds. Are you kidding me? For a world heavyweight title match, 18 seconds. And Daniel Bryan, of course, lost. You know? I wonder if he's going to blame AJ for this loss because as soon as he kissed her and turned around, he caught the brogue kick from Sheamus. What do you think? Oh, I'm sure that he's probably going to have something to say about that. I totally agree. But, um, you know, congratulations to Sheamus. He's your new World Heavyweight Championship on SmackDown. I love Sheamus. I think he's a great wrestler. I just wish that they would have gave him a little more time. I really did not understand the squash match. And it was odd because all of the fans in Miami were huge Daniel Bryan fans. You saw all the signs up saying, yes, yes, yes. I don't even know if you could really call it a squash match. It was 18 seconds of one move. So (laughs) you would say it was an apocalypse match. (laughs) I am the apocalypse. No one can defeat me. It was totally terrible. But I really did feel bad for Daniel Bryan because he has worked really hard. And I, and I was not a fan of Daniel Bryan's at first because I really didn't like his his face character. But his heel character is just amazing. And I really wish they would have gave them more time. Especially the next match that we had, which was just I was not a fan of. And going in, I think that I was a little, you know, a little mad about... What was said about this match in the beginning from one of the participants, Randy Orton. I mean, Orton actually goes on and says that he and the Kane match are more exciting than any match in WrestleMania. Oh, come on now. You're overreacting. I mean, uh, like, the event was obviously called Orton Mania, okay? so Right. And what we come up with, it's called it's called uh, Smack Orton. Smack Orton <laughs> Not SmackDown. And Monday Night Orton. On, Monday Night Orton. Yeah, so. Raw is Orton. Yeah, yeah okay. Mean, it's all about Orton, so I don't know why you get so upset. And I'm so glad that he is not being pushed, but, I mean... I really, I really, I used to love Randy Orton. I really was a big Randy Orton fan. And then after that whole thing with Christian, he just, I just stopped liking him. He just turned terrible. I, I stopped when he got real into the Viper gimmick. That just really got on my nerves. Yeah, that that was pretty. That whole little black mamba moving my shoulders when I'm dancing around the ring thing just just sickens me. Yeah, when he did the split. I don't, what does he call that? Does he call that the the viper when Viper's he does jaws? The viper's jaws <laughs> when he does like the that. split, like the little know. Van Dan split or whatever. But anyway, the match itself pretty terrible. Uh, Kane, obviously, I was picking Kane to lose because obviously Randy Orton, you know, WrestleMania, he won last year, he won the year before that. But he's on a roll, and I really thought Randy Orton was going to steal the show, but, you know, it was a really, really terrible performance on Randy Orton's part on this, and I thought Kane actually did really well, but just was a really bland match, and I was really happy to hear the crowd start when Orton had control screaming, boring, boring, because, you know, truthfully, Orton is rather boring. He's not good as promos. His selling technique is getting worse than Cena's now, yeah. and that's terrible. I mean, he could not sell a penny burrito to a homeless person no offense to homeless people but he's just that terrible and it really showed in this match i mean there were botches left and right kane was carrying the match but when you're working with someone like gordon you can probably only carry a match so far before it's just out of your hands and i think that's what was probably frustrating kane because it seemed like he was frustrated the whole match i i agree and the finish was probably the best part of the match and that was actually a, it was actually pretty cool that they actually pulled that spot off. Probably the only good spot in that match was when Kane choke slam Orton from the top rope. That was that was really cool. Yeah, that was that was it. And and of course Kane wins. Which God, I hope this ends this storyline because I am really sick of Randy Orton. I'd really like to see Randy Orton turn heel. I mean, if Randy Orton turned heel, I might actually start liking him again if he was. To stop doing the whole, ooh, I'm the Viper, I'm, my name is Randy Orton. I mean, come on, buddy. You're, you're stealing that stuff from Alberto Del Rio, for God's sakes. You know? Mm-hmm. Just really, really, really terrible. And then and then after the match, we actually got a pretty funny segment with uh, Santino Morella and Mick Foley making his, w, his WrestleMania return. Mick Foley and Captain Kurt, which is kind of funny, from The Deadliest Catch... And uh, they're 
being silly, eating crab, and I really didn't quite understand this segment, but it was just Santino Morella being silly. He, he was cracking open the, the crab legs with the cobra and everything, and yeah. it was actually really, really funny, but, you know. And it, Nick Foley got Sacco out, and he started having a little battle there with the crabs and the cobra versus Sacco. It was pretty funny. Yeah, well, the best part of the segment, of course, was when Ron Simmons walks in and just screams, Damn! Damn! I love Ron Simmons. He's, he's a great guy. Great yes. guy. All right, and then the next match we have was actually a really good match. Um, it was the uh, WWE Intercontinental title match. This is Big Show versus Cody Rhodes. Actually had a pretty good match. At the beginning of the match, we get that whole... You know, Cody Rhodes' uh, video package of making fun of the big show where it shows him, hey, WWE, what do you got to eat here? You know, WrestleMania. WrestleMania. <laughs> That's a great video package. You know, they're really doing a good job with Cody Rhodes' character. I really like where he's going on this. What, what do you think? Oh, I think he's great. Um, he's, he's every bit as good as his brother and his father, maybe even more so. He's got tons of potential. And he's getting bigger, too. Have you noticed that he's he was a little skinny guy when he was in Legacy? Now he's got a little bit of muscle mass on him. Huh? He, he's nobody to mess with, is he? No. I, re- I really enjoyed the match. And uh, they went for a few minutes. It was a pretty good back-and-forth match. Cody Rhodes attempting, what, the... Uh, the disaster kick. Yeah, the disaster kick. I don't really watch SmackDown that much. Sorry, I'm Jerry Lawler over here. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> I'm not are. watching SmackDown. <laughs> But I, I guess I should start watching it, but I, I'm just not into it. Um, but, yeah, the disaster kick. You know, he got him got him twice before Big Show countered with that spear to the crotch, man. That was, <laughs> you know, and a lot of people don't give Big Show credit for being very agile and, and mobile for a big man, especially that big and being that, that old, you know. He's not he's not a young young guy no more. He's, he's, he's a veteran. Yeah, he's an old timer. He's an old timer, and he can move. He can, he moved well with Cody Rhodes. I thought it was a really good match, and uh, you know the ending was good. You got the spear in the crotch, which was really kind of funny. I guess Nature Boy could you know take a lesson from the Big Show. <laughs> if you're gonna do a low blow, that's the way you do it. That's the way you do it. And then of course we get the what's he calling his knockout punch now? The weapon of mass destruction punch? Is that what he's calling no, it? I think it's just weapon of mass destruction. Yeah, he gets the weapon of mass destruction on Cody Rhodes and we have a new intercontinental champion in the big show. That's two and two he, title changes right there at the beginning of, of WrestleMania. And he he celebrated in the ring and he cried. Yes, and he cried. Which, of course, the reason why he's crying is he finally got his WrestleMania moment, which is kind of what Cody Rhodes' video package was poking at, was that Big Show never had a defining WrestleMania moment, and he definitely has one now. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And (laughs) we were watching WrestleMania with a couple of of people, and they were all commenting on Big Show crying. They're like, why is he crying? I was like, "Um, you would be crying too if you won a title at WrestleMania. I mean, how many people can actually say that... You've won a title at WrestleMania. Not very many. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah, great match. How many stars would you give this match? Uh, I'd give it a three or four. Three or four out of five? Yeah. Huh. All right. I was going to say two and a half, but, you know. Well, three or four because Big Show was moving really well and Cody was just outstanding in the match, so. All right. Well, the next match... Should have, what, in my opinion, should have been the first match of the night. Um, it should have been the dark match. <laughs> yeah, it, it wasn't that great. Uh, it was Beth Phoenix and Eve Torres versus Kelly Kelly and uh, Maria Munez. Is that how you say her name? Menunos. Menunos from Extra Hollywood or whatever. Yeah, the show's called Extra. Extra, yeah. Um, not a great match. There was one really good spot where Kelly Kelly did this flip off the top rope. I mean, Kelly Kelly's actually starting to turn into a really good wrestler. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's doing some high flying stuff. She did her little back flip. It was like I don't really know how do you describe that. How how would you say it? it was like she did a back flip and like landed on the chest. What what do you what would you call that? Um, I'm not really sure. Not really sure either, but it was really cool, and I was really—I'm really glad that Kelly Kelly's progressing. But all in all, the match 
really not that great. Um, I'm really, it really makes me mad about the Diva Division that it's really not, it doesn't have an impact like it used to. We need karma. Yes, very much so. We need karma back. Karma Please. versus Beth Phoenix. Book that for next WrestleMania. Please, karma, come back and save us. Yes, save us divas. And, you know, I, I really don't like to say that because I really like the divas. I really do. And I really wish that WWE would spend more time with them developing. I mean, back when in the heyday, Trish Stratus and, you know, Lita, they all had their time to shine and learn and it just seems like WWE's not giving the, these women, you know, the chance to do that. And when you don't, you get matches like we had at WrestleMania with these. They just treat them like I can be. Yeah. Well, anyway, the way it went was uh, Maria pins uh, Beth Phoenix on a roll-up. And Kelly, Kelly and Maria wins the match. Like I said, I give it a half a star. My, you know what? I'll take that back. I'll give it a star because of the Kelly Kelly backflip because that was really, really cool. Yeah, that was probably the coolest spot I've ever seen Kelly Kelly in quite a while. Yeah. If yeah. ever. Yeah, I agree. Totally agree. Okay, the next match. This is one that me and Bizarro here, we just can't get enough of. It's Triple H, Hell in a Cell versus Undertaker. And the cool thing was at the beginning of this match, we get a special guest announcer. Good old JR. Good old JR. Tougher than a $2 steak slobber knocker. Mm-hmm. And that is exactly what we got in this match. Um, total chaos. It was just. The only bad thing I have to say about this match is Shawn Michaels. Uh. I think if he was involved a lot less, the match would have been a lot better. Yeah, I totally agree. Like, it was just. It was really terrible how. At the beginning of the match, Triple H just taking over the match completely, just dominating The Undertaker, just, you know, similar to last year, um, just dominating The Undertaker, hitting him with chairs, and Shawn Michaels getting in the way saying, stop, stop, stop. It's a, it's an, you know, no disqualification. Why is he getting in the way of the match? I mean, it's no disqualification. Why is he telling him to stop? It, it took away from the match. Like he was trying to make it about him, and it wasn't. Exactly, but, you know, the parts where... The, I, I was okay with the parts where, uh, you know, he got involved in the sense of physically. Yeah, that was cool. That was cool, but the parts where he wasn't, you know, it was just like him going, Hey, hey, you know, stop, Triple H, don't stop hurting him. I mean, what the hell? I don't know. I didn't understand that. And then on top of that, when Undertaker starts going after Triple H and starts doing that to him, Shawn Michaels is nowhere to be found. He's not trying to stop The Undertaker. But yet, Sweet Chin's music's The Undertaker because Undertaker puts him in the Hell's Gate. I don't know what they were trying to do with that match. It was kind of confusing. It was. It was a good, solid match, though. I mean, it was a really good match. I wouldn't say it was the best match of the night, but it has to be probably be the number two, I think. Yeah. Uh, probably the second best match of the night. Not as good as last year. Um, of course, the cool ending with uh, Triple H beating up and the Undertaker standing there and Triple H standing in the corner and he just crotch chops the Undertaker mm-hmm. like, come on to finish me. Yeah. And then we get that, we get that finish and, uh, you know, Shawn Michaels has to count the three. Um... Not as good as last year, I gotta say. What about you? I don't know if that's because we attended last year and we're a little partial, but you know, if Shawn Michaels did not interfere in the beginning, I probably would have gave this match a five star rating. Yeah, um, the whole thing with him talking to Triple H and and talking to the Undertaker, telling them both to stop or whatever. I mean, you know, that kind of ruined it. I don't know what the writers were thinking with that little spots here and there with them doing that but it took away from the match it definitely did and you know what this really I truly and honestly think that they shouldn't have had it in the Hell in a Cell I think it kind of took away the steam of the match as well from being a Hell in a Cell just a regular match would have been fine right exactly and you know it, it wasn't true to the Hell in a Cell theme where you know starting at the top or going up to the top you know what I mean it really was not You know, it it would have been better with just being like last year, no disqualification match. I mean, they didn't even climb the cage at all. 
Yeah, I mean, I understand them being older and not... Oh, older, yeah. But at the same time, don't have a Hell in a Cell match if you're not going to utilize the Cell. I mean, what... Save that for the younger guys. Yeah, I mean, what, what they use the Cell, like, maybe once. Yeah. I mean, they, they what, Undertaker threw Triple H into the into the cage, like, once or twice, maybe. Yeah. And I, I think it really hindered the performers, you know, performing this. And it just... It, wasn't as good as last year. What what would you rate this one? Uh, well, wait a minute. First, first off, the Undertaker won, so the streak lives. Uh, twenty and zero. Yeah, twenty and zero. Uh, probably the one thing that really disappointed me in this match. Also, too, before we get to the ratings, I was expecting Brock Lesnar to come out. Yeah. Lesnar versus Undertaker next year. There's been heat between them two for years. Yeah, I was really hoping. Like, I mean, I wasn't expecting a run in. But I was at least expecting, you know, the Undertaker's 20 and 0 comes up, and then all of a sudden, bam, Brock Lesnar walks out. How yeah. epic would that have been? That would have been nice. And see, Triple H is my favorite wrestler, so him losing and Lesnar walking out, that would have totally made up for, you know. But I wasn't, I knew the Undertaker wasn't going to lose. There's no way they were going to let him lose 20 and 0. Come on. Yeah, and uh, nice patchy mohawk there, Undertaker. Yes, the Undertaker finally reveals his patchy mohawk. It looked, you know, kind of like he had Shawn Michaels shave his head. <laughs> <laughs> Leave him alone. Leave him alone. We're sorry, Shawn Michaels. You're awesome. But come on, really, dude. Get that eye fixed. Come on. But, um, no, you know, like I said, not as great as last year to me. Some fans may disagree because they enjoyed, you know, what it was. But not as good. What would what, what, you rank this one? I'd give it a three. I I agree. I give it a three. Also, not 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 that great, but you know, probably probably the second best match of the night. Not too bad. And then uh, another thing, we get a uh, right after that match because it takes them a little while to get out of the ring. And of course, the cool thing about that at the end was Triple H and Shawn Michaels and the Undertaker hugging, and then them taking under or uh, Triple H to the back. You know, yeah. that was really cool. Showing camaraderie, their attitude error guys. And you know what? That was another thing about that match. I didn't understand. They kept saying it's the end of an era. I mean, you know, the Undertaker's coming back. He's going to be there till he's a hundred. Yeah. Streak's going to be seventy and zero. So anyway, moving on. Um, the next thing is we had the video footage from the 2012. Uh, Hall of Fame ceremony. Which and, will be airing tomorrow night. Yeah, it'll be airing tomorrow night before Raw, correct? At 8 uh, o'clock? I believe so, yeah. Yeah. And um, Howard Finkel comes out. Of course, Howard Finkel always does the introduction of the Hall of Famers. I really miss Howard Finkel. I mean, he's kind of a jerk on, you know, being mean towards Lillian Garcia sometimes. But And I think Lillian Garcia is a great announcer, but... He's a little mean to her. I mean, but he's he's a great announcer too. But I guess so. I guess I don't know. What do you think? I don't really care. You don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we get the Hall of Famers to come out. You know, we had uh, you know all of them: Ron Simmons, J.J. Dillon, the Four Horsemen, um, Mike Tyson, and of course Edge and, and Bill Mascaras. Yes, and then of course we had uh, was that uh, was it Yokozuna's? family came out for him yep. that was that's really sad that he couldn't actually be there because he passed away but you know he was one of my favorite big guys yeah back in the day great guy he actually put over lex luger in wwf oh yeah it was it's hard to put lex luger over. yeah it's hard it's hard <laughs> it's hard damn work making him look <laughs> real tough it's real tough but and then of course we get edge's music and he comes out and he's got his new haircut cut short and he's looking crying. all grown up yeah He's crying to Cryomania, Orton Mania. Yep. It's on. <laughs> All right. And then the next thing we get, of course, was a back backstage segment, but we really didn't. It wasn't that great. Is The Miz trying to pump up Team Laurinaitis. Nothing great. Uh, we got Team Laurinaitis versus Team Long. I kind of figured the outcome of this match uh, was an all right match. Not too bad. I like the spot of the... You know, three somersault flips off over the top rope. You know the. With I, don't, the I, I don't know if I saw that one. Oh, you were too busy eating. <laughs> yeah, I might have been eating or, or outside smoking. I don't know. Yeah, it it was it was an okay match. I watched it. Uh, you know, nothing really great. Had you know, 
you guys know who the teams were. Uh, I kind of figured the winner was going to be Team Leonidas, and it was really awkward. They got a clean victory with the Miz. Yeah, yeah. Miz came through. Miz finally came through. and I'm, It's really sad what they're doing to the Miz. Um, I'm really upset with that. I'm really upset that he was headlining WWE's WrestleMania last year, and he's in this. I mean, that's just that's a waste to me. Oh, I'm sure he probably pissed off management somehow. <laughs> I agree. But anyway, we got Team Laurinaitis winning with uh, Miz doing the Skull Crushing finale for the win. And then we get, you know, an awkward backstage moment where Team Laurinaitis is going down. And now that Team Laurinaitis has beat Team Long, Team Laurinaitis, or John Laurinaitis, actually is the GM of Raw and SmackDown now. Yeah, so maybe you might want to start watching SmackDown. Yeah, maybe I might. But we get an awkward backstage segment where uh, we see CM Punk stand there and uh, Team Laurinaitis walks by celebrating and Laurinaitis stops him and teases Punk and uh, he says that he wants a wrestling match tonight. He announces if Punk loses his temper and gets disqualified tonight, he will lose the title to Chris Jericho. And then he you know, pretty much mocks Punk and tells him to have a good match and walks off laughing. Um... Kind of, you know, kind of some stiff rules there for Punk. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, the deck was stacked against him, but I kind of figured something like that was going to happen with CM Punk, with the old uh, Laurinaitis. Vice President of Executive Talent Relations. <laughs> yeah, that's that that has been steaming for a long time. That's been an awkward storyline. I wish it... Would go a little deeper, you know, maybe get Lauren Ida some punk to wrestle, but anyway. Johnny Ace. Yeah, Johnny Ace. Anyway, we got the title match, the WWE um, heavyweight title match, uh, and that's Chris Jericho, Chris Jericho, excuse me, um, and CM Punk. A very, very, very good match. Oh, that was the best match of the night. Best match easily. of the night. Five easily. star rating easily. I'd give it six stars if I could. Great match. And you know what was so great about it was the build. The way Chris Jericho was just baiting CM oh, Punk there yeah. to get disqualified was, right out of the beginning. That's classic that Jericho. Fantastic. How's your father doing? Yes, that was just amazing. I enjoyed this match so much. I don't I couldn't take my eyes off the TV when this match was on. It, it's just another great performance from Jericho and Punk and you know, Jericho has always given great WrestleMania matches. And this was no short of a masterpiece. Oh, yeah. He is the best in the world at what he does. And I, you know what? I got to say, CM Punk is, too. After this match, yeah. it was a really great match. Fantastic. Re really back and forth. We saw Punk almost lose his, you know, almost lose it and just completely get disqualified. How about that top rope jump off the top of, of you know, when, he hit, when Jericho was on the table? Oh, yeah. And Punk just jumps off. And another crazy spot was when um, Jericho suplexes Punk off the damn ring apron. Yeah, I ain't seen that on, in years. I haven't seen that in years. Onto the floor. They don't do that no more. They don't do that no more. You don't do that on my brand. No, not on my PG wrestling. Not on my PG wrestling. That was and there was blood tonight, too. Yeah, definitely. But, yes, a great match. Wonderfully executed. Uh, congratulations Chris Jericho and CM Punk. I hope you guys can continue working together because that was just I really enjoyed that match. I'm actually enjoying the CM Punk and Jericho feud anyway. Yes, very personal. Kind of reminds me of the Shawn Michaels Jericho feud. Yeah. Where they actually sat down and said, okay, hey buddy, we're going we're gonna to use personal stuff. And that's exactly mm -hmm. what they did. They use personal stuff, and, you know, it's always good when you can do a little bit of a shoot and, you know, add some real contrast to the storyline. Oh, yeah. Definitely an amazing match. And then, I have to say, the greatest moment in WWE history, Brodus Clay coming out, calling his mama out, and his mama coming out, and all her mama friends coming out, looking like the cast of 227. <laughs> Oh, but before booty, that, booty shaking. But before that, uh, when he got out his phone and he's gonna call his mama, then 
they showed the audience and they showed this one guy he had his phone and he was actually calling his mom I thought that was amazing <laughs> oh what about me I got a text message as soon as it said that and it was ringing and everybody's like Brandon is your mama calling <laughs> that was some really epic stuff man and I, I gotta say it was one of the funniest segments I've seen in WWE Wrestlemania history oh it just makes me an uh, even huger Brodus Clay fan the Funkosaurus, man, he brought the heat tonight, though. I got to tell you, that was some funny stuff. I could not stop laughing about that. I mean, he didn't even have a match, but what he did was just amazing. He, he didn't even need a match. He surpassed the Orton match just by coming out there and dancing. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, in case you were wondering, no, we did not say the rankings of the Orton or you know Daniel Bryan match because we really didn't give them a ranking because the Daniel Bryan match didn't really last long enough to deserve a ranking, and the... Kane and Randy Orton match was so terrible, we didn't want to give it a rank. It it was a train wreck. It was a train wreck. Okay, on to the next match. The one that is most anticipated and the one that scared the crap out of Phillip the most is The Rock versus John Cena. The match of the century, supposedly, or the, you know, the ever biggest superstars head-to-head, most electrifying man in sports entertainment versus... The guy who rises above the hate that we don't really like, John Cena. Yeah, Fruity Pebbles. Mr. Fruity Pebbles. And you know what? I gotta say, not a great match. Not at all. And I don't blame The Rock, you know? I really don't. The The ring rust was there a little bit, but not much. And the bad part is, you know, the ring rust was there, but he was still better than Cena. And he was trying to carry the match, but you're working. But you're working with a guy like Cena, and it's hard to carry a match with a guy like Cena. I mean, it looked almost like Cena was intimidated by how good The Rock was. I mean, it really was. Uh, of course, you know, to regular wrestling fans, it probably looked. You know, people that don't necessarily pay attention to like you know bumps or spots or anything like that, kind of like we do. They really did not understand that John Cena botched a lot of those spots. And it was really terrible and really sad because you could tell The Rock was getting extremely frustrated with him. I mean, how many times he botched The Rock Bottom twice? Yeah. I mean, you know, The Rock Bottom, your legs are supposed to kick out, and he almost tripped up The Rock doing it. And then there was another botch one where he tried to do the leg drop from the top and actually overshot The Rock. And hit him with his butt instead of his legs. I mean, Randy Orton, or, or I'm sorry, not wow, wow, sorry, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> See, well, look, talking Randy about Orton's horrible. in my head. <laughs> we're talking about horrible wrestling, and yeah, Randy Orton comes workers. in my head. It's just terrible. But John Cena, um, he's just not that great at selling. And I respect the crap out of John Cena for all of his charitable work. And the hard work that he puts into wrestling and making WWE successful, but his character and his wrestling ability is that's terrible. Oh yeah, I mean he's a good guy, he's a great guy, but his character is terrible and his just his stiffness is awful. I mean, uh, he's he's just he's another one of those that you know you couldn't sell. He couldn't sell a, a, a penny burrito to a homeless person. He could not. He just. He just, he almost ruined the match, I, I believe. And I was really surprised by the ending of this, though. It, it really surprised me that they actually let The Rock win. Well, it was his hometown. Yeah, but, you know, it made sense for Cena to win this match. Well. It, it really did, because, you know, Cena's the guy that's going to be there week in, week out. Rock isn't. This is true, but I guess we'll find out tomorrow on Raw. Yeah, and one of the things that really scared the crap out of me were these entrance musics. The entrance artists we had oh, for man. Cena, we had Machine Gun Kelly. Oh, God. And I got to say, this is the first time I've ever seen a rap star wearing skinny jeans. Not only skinny jeans, but camouflage skinny, skinny jeans. He kind of looked like, what did we say, uh, um, a heroin addict zombie. He looked like a leper. Yeah, he, he looked really bad. He, extremely skinny. It just... Sickening. Sickening. Disgusting, yeah. and, I, and I was terrified. 
<laughs> and I'm not scared of much, but he terrified me. And then we had, of course, Flo Rider taking off his jacket with his ass half hanging out of his pants and trying to look like a... Wear a damn shirt! <laughs> trying to look like a rapping Glenn Danzig or something. It was just really, really awkward. Uh, some fans may bash us about this, but I'm sorry. Not a great match at all. The Rock tried to carry it for as much as he could. I like the finish. The finish was great. Um... We had Cena trying to mock the rock by doing the people's elbow and gives the rock a, a botched rock bottom, should I say, uh, to end the match. And you could tell the rock was extremely frustrated all night long. But, uh, yeah, it was it was good to see the rock win. I'm really happy with that. Yeah. But what I'm not happy with is when Flo Rida was singing his little song for the rock, they had the Tron bike on the stage and nobody got on the Tron bike to ride it <laughs> yeah that was pretty awesome wasn't it it was awesome but nobody got on the bike to ride it it looked like The Rock was actually going to get up there and ride the Tron bike I, I was really hoping he would and it would have been epic well if I was there I would have jumped up on the stage and punched some security guards and I would have jumped on the bike and rode it <laughs> I don't even care I hear you um, all in all after the match of course Cena looking sad like somebody just shot his puppy dog, you know, and, you know, we get a the Rock celebrating, and, yeah, the Rock wins, the Rock wins, yay, Miami's not going to get rioted, and, of course, Michael Cole says farewell from WrestleMania 28, and, gotta say, pretty good WrestleMania, oh, uh, what do you want to rank this match? Uh, give it a, give it a three and a half. A three and a half, really? Yeah. I was going to give it like a two. Well, I'm giving it a three and a half because I have to applaud The Rock's efforts in trying to carry the match. Well, I would have gave it a four, but, you know, Cena didn't carry his half, so that's why I only gave it a two. The two are for The Rock, so, because of course, you know, he's just better than Cena. But yeah, um, not a bad WrestleMania. On um, at the end of this match, I was kind of hoping to see Dave Batista or Lord, what's his name, Lord Lord Tensai. Tensai. I was really hoping to see one of them come out. And you know, WWE always hypes that these people are backstage; they could show up, and they never do. And I was really hoping, you know, we'd see either Dave Batista come back or you know Lord Tensai. So you know, all in all. Pretty good WrestleMania. Um, best matches by far, you know, CM Punk versus Chris Jericho. Best match of the night. Oh, yeah, easily. That and should have been the main event. That I agree. Totally should have been the main event, but, you know, had the big build for the Rock and Cena match. So, But, yeah, uh, let us know what you guys think, and that's going to do it for our recap. I'd like to thank... You know, Bizarro 13 for showing up and doing this guest hosting with me. You're welcome. And you want to promote your little, your, uh, you know, YouTube video or your YouTube videos or your channel or, you know, tell everybody oh. about your Facebook page or anything? Yeah, I have a YouTube channel. Uh, type in Bizarro 13, B I Z Z A R O 1 3, and that's my channel. And I have it linked to my Facebook page, so there's a link to my Facebook page on the channel. So um, if you're bored, check them out. Uh, it's just some playthroughs of classic and obscure video games. Um, I do use cheats. I'm not the greatest video game player in the world, in spite of what my brother says. Um, I said legend. Wait for it. Dairy. Oh. <laughs> well, anyway, it's... Uh, the point is to see these games from start to finish, and usually I will post it all a single playthrough in one long video. But um, yeah, if if you're bored, check it out. Awesome, awesome! Thank you, Biz, for showing up and hosting this with me. It's been a lot of fun, man. Yes, gotta say, good WrestleMania, good solid event, and thank you guys for listening. And that's all from here. If you'd like to see more recap videos, please go to the VRO website and don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Facebook.